Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and over the last two weeks we looked at a lot of tiny NAS devices. Today we're looking at a much larger one. Uh, this is the IOSAFE 1019 Plus NAS from a company called CRU, and this is a Synology 1019 Plus that is enclosed in a steel fireproof and waterproof case. It weighs about 60 pounds. It is extremely heavy, but is designed to survive a fire and the fire department's water that will be used to put the fire out. And we're gonna take a closer look at this NAS and how it performs in just a second. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this was provided to the channel free of charge by CRU. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this device is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is an enterprise device, and as such, it commands a much higher price versus the consumer version of the 1019 Plus NAS. Uh, so this starts at $2,400, and that is with no drives installed. Uh, by comparison, the regular 1019 Plus sells for around $700 or thereabouts. I saw it on Amazon today for about $640, and it will perform exactly the same as this one does. So you really are paying for uh, the rugged enclosure here that will protect you from fire and flood. That, of course, is not something you'll have on the consumer version. Now, if you uh, opt for their $4,300 version, they will install five four terabyte hard drives inside of the device for you, and you will get a two-year data protection plan as part of the deal, and that will allow you to send the device back to them should you have a fire or a flood, and they will send it off to make sure the data gets recovered fully. Uh, so that's something that might be of interest if you are looking for the maximum protection here. Uh, that plan is good for two years. If you pay another $500 and go to $47.99, they'll cover you for five years, and they give you some options for buying uh, the data plan extension if you just go for the two year at the start. Uh, just know though that if you buy it diskless, you can't get the data protection plans. You'll get the physical security here, but not uh, the added bonus of having them be able to recover your data for you. And I guess they send the disks off to drive savers if you really run into trouble. I'll put some detail about the plan in the description below because it is quite lengthy and it's important probably to read up on it before you make uh, the investment, but it might be worthwhile, uh, especially in an enterprise environment where you want that added peace of mind. But if you just want the fireproofing here, uh, 2,400 bucks is the cost of entry. Now this is a 1019 plus NAS. I'm gonna take off the front panel while I talk here. Uh, and that means it has an Intel Celeron J3455 processor. That's a quad core Celeron chip. Uh, for those of you who are into media surfing, it will support Plex transcoding. Uh, this is probably overkill for a media server, but if your media is very important to you, you can certainly run it through here. It has eight gigabytes of RAM installed. Uh, that goes in on the bottom of the device. And like the 1019 Plus, it also supports dual NVMe SSD cache. And you can see what that looks like uh, in this B-roll clip I've got running right here. Uh, note though that I recommend not doing the read-write disk caching to those solid state drives because if you have a fire, the bottom portion is not protected from the fire. Only the hard drives inside this case you're gonna see are. So you wanna run that cache as read only uh, to make sure you don't have any data loss. Just keep that in mind because that's something that uh, the manual didn't mention to me as I was reading through it. So I'm gonna pull off the front panel here and give you a look inside. This thing is very heavy. It's about 20 pounds or so just for the front door. So you got steel on the outside. And then inside here, you have this white endothermic material. And this feels like a metal or a heavy plastic. And what happens under a fire condition is that it will convert to steam. And that steam will keep the drives inside here cool and protected. Now they say it can survive a fire of 1550 degrees Fahrenheit or about 840 degrees Celsius uh, for about 30 minutes. After that, uh, this stuff will have burned off and you will have a temperature issue inside of here. But typically, uh, that's long enough for a sprinkler system to keep the fire down or, of course, have the fire department come in and take care of things. And the drives here enclosed inside the metal portion are also in a waterproof seal. So you don't have to worry about the drives getting wet when the fire department does come in to hose everything down. So provided they get out there pretty quickly within a half hour or so, uh, this probably will keep the data safe inside. 
Uh, what it does sacrifice, though, are all of the electronics. So the USB ports, the power connectors on the back, uh, everything here is not going to work after it burns, but your data will be safe and you could transport these drives to uh, another Synology NAS and get at your data again. Uh, you will probably want to send it back to, to them, to CRU, if you have that data protection plan to make sure everything gets recovered. Uh, but it should, again, hold up in a fire. And I'm working on something now with a local fire department to see if we can burn one of these things and actually put it to the test. Uh, we won't do that yet because I don't have the right permits and, and expertise to set something on fire and do it safely. Uh, so if we're able to arrange that, I will let you know. Uh, now, earlier, what I did is I took out the little wrench here that it comes with and we opened up this drive bay for the first time. And just to give you a sense as to how sealed it is, listen to the hiss here as we open it up for the first time. Now, the reason why we had the hiss is that they build these out in a higher elevation than where I am here in Connecticut. So that's the air equalizing out, but it does give you a sense as to how tightly everything seals up. Uh, they rate this thing as being submersible in water fully up to 10 feet for 72 hours. Uh, so you should probably be able to get at it in a flood and it would certainly survive the fire department's hoses and everything. Uh, this is the door and you can see just how thick that gasket is here for sealing up everything. So I think it will be in there pretty tight and this really does uh, hold itself in there quite well with this spring loaded uh, screw here. So that is all good. Uh, otherwise, it's kind of your usual Synology NAS. We've got uh, five hard drives installed on this 1019 Plus, which is the maximum number of drives that that NAS typically supports. Uh, what I like about a five bay NAS is that you can have uh, two of these drives used for data protection. So you can lose any two drives in a fire or other event and still have all of your data accessible to you, yet still have a good amount of capacity. Uh, they will configure this out to a maximum of five 14 terabyte drives. That's the maximum it supports at the moment. And of course, if you go that route, you'll be well over uh, $14,000 if you have them do it. Uh, but this one had a bunch of WD red drives installed. Uh, very easy to take them in and out. It also supports hot swapping. So you're able to uh, very easily uh, pop in a new drive if you do have a drive failure along the way. You just have to screw them back in here with the uh, included little wrench to get them back together again. Now, I did notice the drives are running about five degrees Fahrenheit warmer than my other Synology box that's not inside one of these fireproof cases. So I was looking at about 95 to 98 degrees Fahrenheit on each of these drives as they were operating. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but it does keep itself at that temperature through these two big fans here in the back. These are 10 watt fans each. And as such, this thing makes a ton of noise. I would actually liken it to a commercial refrigerator. Uh, so it's not something that I would recommend you put in the middle of your office or any place where uh, you have the typical workday activities going on. Uh, you should probably put it someplace where the fan noise will not be heard because even at idle, it's making a ton of noise. And if it gets really hot, those fans go even faster and make even more noise. Now in the back, we have our usual array of ports. We've got a USB 3.0 port here for connecting up external hard drives. You can use that for uh, backing up the device here because even though it's a fireproof thing, you should still back it up. Uh, you can plug those drives in back there. You can plug printers in and have this work as a print server. There's a bunch of things that do work with that USB port. Uh, you've got dual gigabit LAN ports here. Uh, but note these are not 10 gigabit ports and as such the uh, total performance of the device will not be as fast as it could be. Uh, that's the same uh, gigabit ethernet that the 1019 plus has however. Uh, next to that is a red port here. That is the eSATA port and you can plug in an eSATA hard drive for example, uh, but you can also plug in an expansion chassis and I do believe they have a fireproof expansion chassis you can add to this so you can get additional drives connected. It'll also work uh, most likely with the Synology one, but of course that will not be fireproof. Uh, and then next to that, of course, you have the power connector. It uses the same amount of power as the 1019 plus. So it's the same power consumption for the most part. However, this one has 150 Watts on its power supply versus 120 Watts on the consumer version. Uh, the extra wattage is going towards those two fans here in the back. Otherwise it will consume the same level of power. On the front, you have another USB 3 port. You got the power button here for firing up the thing in those fans. 
and then you have your status indicator along with your drive activity lights. So overall it works uh, pretty much like you would expect a Synology NAS to work. And now what we're going to do is bring this into the back room so we don't hear it. Uh, we're going to plug it in, boot it up, and I'll show you how it performs. All right, so we've got the device booted up in the back room now. And as you can see here, we've got a Synology control panel. Now, if you have never used a Synology NAS device before, uh, they are more than just file sharing devices. They have a lot of server applications that you can install on them. And they've done a very nice job of replicating most of the features of the major cloud services, yet it's on a device that you have under your direct control. Uh, so that includes things like Dropbox-like functionality where you can sync files between your laptops and desktops and the uh, NAS device, and you can do that anywhere in the world. You can run VPN servers on them. You can even boot up Windows and run virtual machines on it along with uh, Docker capability. They even replicated Google Docs. You can get a word processor and spreadsheet uh, that perform exactly like Google Docs does, including the multi-user simultaneous editing features. And you can see just a few of the things you can install on here and play around with. And you've got 8 gigs of RAM, so you've got plenty of uh, headway here to make use of this. I've got a playlist down below that describes a lot of these features in detail. So if you're not familiar with the Synology stuff, I would definitely check it out down below. And I should add that Synology is an occasional sponsor here on the channel, but they are not sponsoring this video. So let's shift gears now and do some performance testing. We've got my Mac here uh, connected to Gigabit Ethernet, and we've found the I.O. safe on the network. And one of the cool things about how these network attached storage devices work is that they show up like any other computer on your network, so you can get at them uh, through all of the different apps that Synology makes available, or you can just load up your Mac Finder or Windows File Explorer and connect to it and read and write files that way too. And what we're gonna do is just point it at the shared directory here and run this speed test to see how fast we can read and write data over that gigabit network. And we're getting write speeds here at about 103.5 megabytes per second. And on the reads, we're going at about 110 megabytes per second. And this is what I would expect out of a drive at this price point. So we're seeing the performance of uh, pretty much the entire gigabit ethernet connection here, which is good. Uh, so I don't think you're going to have any performance differences between uh, this fireproof 1019 plus and the one you might buy at retail. Let's check out performance on an encrypted volume now. All right, so let's connect to an encrypted folder I created on the NAS and open it up and we'll start running the test again here. And you can see the write speeds are about the same and I'm expecting we'll see about the same out of the read speeds as well. Uh, we're getting this performance on the encrypted folder because we do have that quad core Intel chip inside of it. And this performs identically to what I experienced on the 1019 plus as well. Now, as I mentioned, this is probably overkill as a personal media server, but if you did want to serve media from this device, it should do a pretty good job of it. I've got Plex installed right now. The server is running on the IO safe. And right now I am streaming two full Blu-ray MKV movies to two different devices. Uh, both of these movies are being converted from their high bit rate 1080p original to 720p at four megabits per second. And it's doing this pretty much in real time. And this chip on board, the Intel processor, can do this in hardware through Intel's QuickSync technology. And as you can see here, both movies seem to be playing back just fine. Uh, you can get a feel for the network bandwidth that this is taking up at the moment. And then if we jump down here to the CPU, uh, you will see that we've got plenty of room here for additional activities. We're only utilizing about 20% of the CPU as both of these movies are being transcoded simultaneously. And we've got plenty of room here on the RAM as well. Plex is only using about 3% of our overall RAM to do what it is currently doing. So I think as a media server, uh, this works fine. And this is, of course would be the performance you would get out of the 1019 plus as well. Now power consumption, we're observing at around 41 to 42 watts. Uh, this is very close to what we see on the regular 1019 plus there might be an extra five watts or so uh, going on with this box because of the more powerful fans on it but generally that's what you can expect about 40 watts as it's sitting there with the drives activated uh, the drives will go to sleep if nothing is going on but if you are running a lot of server applications 
uh, it's possible that those drives may never spin down if you have things constantly running in the background. So overall, uh, not all that different from what you would get out of a regular non-fireproof Synology 1019 Plus. So overall, I am quite pleased with the performance of this. It really doesn't take anything away from what you would get out of the less expensive retail version. But of course, you do get the peace of mind that this thing will survive a fire and a flood or both. And that might be something that's important in your particular institution. Uh, you should, though, keep backing it up. Uh, one of the nice things about these Synology devices is that they have a ton of backup options. So in addition to backing up locally, you can send files off to many of the major cloud services. They've got a great backup application that can manage all of that for you. And I would suggest doing everything you can uh, to keep your data safe. That includes buying the enclosure, but also just following good practices for good data protection. My only gripe with it is the fan noise. And I think because this is an enterprise product, you'll likely have a place to put it where that fan noise will not be a problem for people in the office. But again, just note that, especially if you have a small space without a lot of flexibility for uh, putting something noisy into the environment. You will hear it, certainly more so than you might with other network attached storage devices that don't have all the fireproofing around it. I do hope we can work out something with the fire department so we can light one of these things up and see what happens. I will keep you posted on that. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, emudev.org, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.